Here are the correct answers. Please check your work. Ask if you need to. I will highlight them. Remember, I didn't care if you drew it. Everybody okay with the first two? Sweet. Now, I'm going to give you a little... Uh, actually, I'll do that later. Hulk mad. Hulk mad. What did you think I said? No. Because if I smash the computer, they might be mad at me because I've already broken one. I got up from my desk and I hooked the power cord with my leg because Microsoft built the new magnetic power cord that's supposed to pull out instead of pull your computer off your desk. Turns out it doesn't work. The computer goes right off the desk and then cracks and then you're recording and then your teacher says the F word because he just dropped the computer and it gets recorded and he doesn't care because if there's one time that you should be allowed to say that, it's times like that, right? You smash your hammer with a nail. I mean, you smash your thumb with a hammer while you're nailing stuff in. That was the first time I heard my kid swear. He was banging something and he hit his thumb and he went, ah! Oh! And I was like, that's okay, boy. That's the time it's allowed. That's not actually true. When he was a little, little boy, like 18 months old, he was walking around the living room and he was saying, holy S, effing hell. <laughs> but he, he's just like singing a song. Oh, that was pretty funny. My wife and I are like, oh, preschool is going to be fun. <laughs> Catherine doesn't swear. I have a bit of a potty mouth sometimes. Um, anyway, there. Uh, this one, most people do wrong. Because they don't understand that the yellow thing there is the whole base. So you have to square the entire thing. A lot of people at this point in the lesson tell me this answer is x squared plus 4. That's what they think it is because they distribute that in there because that's what we did in exponents, Mr. Myers. Except that once again, you have to learn what's actually happening. In exponents, when we distribute that 2 in there, 2x squared, yes? What math is happening right there? Multiply. And exponents just deal with multiplying, right? What's happening right there? Addition. Addition. So I cannot just distribute that 2 to change the multiplying. The 2 says the entire base is multiplied by itself. So you have to do x plus 2, x plus 2. And then you have to do double distribution. Hockey? Hockey. There's the next one. There's the next one. There's the next one. There's the next one. Everybody okay with them? Sweet. Turn the page over to 23. There's that one. Now, it's time I gave you guys a nice little trick that will make your life slightly easier now that I've made you do three pages of multiplying and made you memorize how to do double distribution. Please notice something here. Notice that those two things I just highlighted are single variables, no coefficient, yes? Now, if I expand this properly, then I get, then I get a computer that freezes, then I get x squared minus x, right? Then I would get minus 2x plus 2, yes? And that gets me an answer of x squared minus 3x plus 2, yes? Please notice something. What do you notice about everything I am highlighting in green? They are all negative. What else do you notice? We're in a math class. So look at the math. What do you notice about negative 2, negative 1, and 3? Maybe this will help if I highlight that column as well. They add up to that term, don't they? What do you notice about 
the two green things that I have highlighted and the purple thing that I'm about to highlight when my computer wakes up due to its quality. Due to its quality. What do you notice about the two green things and the purple thing? They don't add up. They multiply together, don't they? So here is a nice little gift that I am going to give you. If you have X, and this will, will this work with every letter? No. Oh, yeah. 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 If you have X plus a number, and you have X plus another number, any other number, then the answer is going to be X squared, right? And then this is going to be A plus B with an X. And the last one is going to be, as soon as my computer wakes up, plus A times B. It's a little shortcut that only works when you have a single letter there. Okay? So let's have a look at that. We're going to use it on this. We're going to use it on this page once or twice. So this first one, there's the answer. Oh, well, that worked well. Highlight. There. There's the next answer. Now, here, will it work here? Is X by itself? So, the middle term is 2XY, negative 2 plus 2. What's negative 2 plus 2? 0, so there's no middle term. And the last term is that times that, 4Y squared. Everybody see how it works? Now look at this one. This was X minus 4 squared, so it's X minus 4, X minus 4, right? Does it have an X only at the front? So can I use my little shortcut? Right. It's X squared. And what's negative 4 and negative 4? Negative 8X when you add them. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Handy little trick, hey? Only works then. That's why I didn't show it to you on the first day. Because I didn't want you accidentally doing it in this case. Picking up what I'm putting down? Read my mail, mowing my lawn. This one, triple distribution. So you just collect your like terms at the end. There's the answer. And this one, oh, yuck, cube. So you had to do x3, x3, x3. I always like to do the second ones first, and I leave that guy. That's just what I like to do. You don't have to do it that way. But you'll notice that in this part that's highlighted blue, I can use my little shortcut, can't I? Because it's x and x. So negative 3 and negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And then here, I have to do, at this spot, I got to do that, triple distribution to add it all up and get that. Everybody Gouda? This is 124. Can I use the shortcut there? Yes. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2. 5 times 7 is negative 35. Can't use the shortcut there. Got to write it out. There it is. Can't use the shortcut there. Got to write it out. There it is. Can't use the shortcut. There it is.
There's K. There's L. Please check your work over. There's M. And N got a little messy there. It looks like it's supposed to be X to the sixth. All that has been recorded. If you didn't get some of the previous answers, you can go back and find them on your own if you care enough to do so. Everybody good? Can everybody multiply? Mm, sweet. If you would be so kind as to turn over onto page 125. I think it's 125. All righty. Very quickly, over here on the left, I need to remind you guys of something. In math, what does the word factors mean? Not as, an a, not as a verb, as an action. What are factors? We use them in square roots and cube roots as well. What are factors? Any numbers that multiply together in any amount, right? So we know, so if I give you this very simple one, 2 times 7 times 4, those are factors. What is the answer? The answer is. 56. What do we call the answer in a multiplying question? Product. Okay. Now, those are factors, yes? Are they all the factors of 56? No. Are they prime factors of 56? No, two of them are. Right? They're just factors. We can do a lot of stuff with factors, okay? We just learned prime factors to simplify square roots and cube roots and fourth roots and things like that, right? Back in grade four or three, you learned factors with Mrs. Bad Crumble. She would ask you to take what are the factors of six? And you would go one and six and two and three. Right? Because 1 times 6 equals 6, and 2 times 3 equals 6. And then as you got further and further into math, you started learning things like 4 times 1.5 equals 6. Are these still factors of 6? Yes or no? Yeah, because they're still multiplying together to make 6. Everybody cool? Everybody's cool with what factors are, yes? Any two things multiplied together, I lie, any things multiplied together are factors. Cool? Okay. So looking at what I have here, what would you call the 4 and the x minus 5? They are factors. Gentlemen, gentlemen, stop. Okay, stop. If you don't care about this or you've done it before, then put your head down on your desk and take a nap. But stop talking, okay? That is a factor. 
and that is a factor, right? If those are both factors, what math are they doing? Multiplying to make a product, yes? What is that product going to be? Four X minus 20. Yes? Everybody cool with that? All right. Now, stop for a second. And I want you to cast your mind back again to grade three. If I showed you this fraction, would you leave it that way? Yes or no? You would leave four over 20? Grade four, grade five. Whenever you learn fractions, would you have left that? Would your elementary school teacher have been happy if you left that as your answer? No. What would he or she have wanted you to do? Simplify it. To what? One over five, correct? How did you know it was one over five? Because you would have divided these out and found factors of those, yes? All right. So when you look at this, you should notice that 4 and 20 share factors, don't they? What we have done here is what we call, as you have already seen, expansion. The other step, the reverse of expansion, is what we call, as soon as the arrow shows up, factoring. Okay? And factoring is achieved through division. It's going to dry, dry up in a minute. There we go. Oh, div Divion. Division. So all of you should look at that and say to yourself, self, what is the common factor between 4 and 20? 4. So all of you should recognize that if I take 4x and I take 20 and I divide them both by 4, I get, what's 4x divided by 4? x. What's 20 divided by 4? Negative 5. And what did I divide all that by? 4. Please notice that I can complete the circle as soon as my ink shows up and get back around to where we started. Is everybody with me? It is following the same principles that you already learned in grade 3 and 4 and 5. But now we've added letters, and instead of it being fractions, we've got some math in the middle. We're dealing with polynomials, but we are using the exact same principles as we dealt with for fractions, yes? All right. Now, you guys are smart kids. Are all of them going to be that simple? Of course not. Let's look at this one. How many factors are in this question? Two. Two. How do you, but there's four things written there. Why is it only two factors? Not quite. There is some notation there that makes this only two factors. The brackets, because the brackets group things together, yes? The brackets are telling me that this is factor one and this is factor two, right? So if I multiply them together, I end up with a product, yes? Now, we know how to multiply that together. Can we use our little shortcut? So it's going to be x squared. And what do I do with 4 and 2? Add them to get what? 6x. And what do I do to get the last term? Multiply them. What's 4 times 2? 8. Is everybody cool with that? Now, knowing what you know from up here, there is some math that you can apply to a product 
to get back to the factors. Yes? So what is the product down here? The red or the black? The red. So there must be some factoring. We could do to get this back to that, right? Because we proved we could do it up here. So if we can do it once in math, can we do it every time? Yes, but it's a different method. And we're not going to get to this one today. But you can all plainly see that if these are factors of this, there must be a way to get back to there. Yes? All right. Let's practice this the easy way. First thing I want to do, that shouldn't even be there. Is it there on your books? Hmm. Ignore that. Pretend it's not there. Like in Super Troopers, where the guy shoots at the target and hits the guy in the balls. And then he says, don't worry about that guy. Don't worry about that guy. Super Troopers 2 is coming out soon. I can't wait. All right. So, I don't want to do this with pictures. I don't like them. I find it to be very, very confusing. Okay? But I'm going to do it once. How many X's do I have there? Six. So I would draw six bars, right? Yeah? yeah? And how many numbers do I have? Three. So I would draw three little guys. Yeah? Right? Okay. Now, since I'm saying factor it, that must mean I'm going to break it down, right? So what could I break this down into? So I have two groups that work. What are the ways I can split six? I can split six into two groups of three, or I can split six into three groups of two. Yes? Everybody agree? Okay. So one of those two will work for six. But it's not just six that I'm working with, is it? I'm also working with three. Which of those groups will work here? The blue line or the green lines? The green lines, because the green lines split it into three groups, right? I can't split this into two, so I gotta split it into three, right? which means both six and three were divided into, or divided by what? I divided them into threes, didn't I? Okay, so what we have done there, when I divide into threes, I'm gonna erase the blue line now, how many X's is in one group? Two X's. How many numbers are in one group? One. And what did I divide it by? Three. Three. So that is how we factor this. Is everyone cool with that? Okay, now we're going to show that algebraically, I think. Yeah, we are. Good. So now we're going to come here. Don't turn the page. Don't turn the page. I just wanted to make sure that that was what was next. So we've done this now. 6x plus 3. What's your hint that you can do something with this? Same thing as with fractions, right? If I gave you 6 over 3, would you leave it like that? No. Of course not. You would make it 2, right? So when you see the 6 and the 3, you should be saying to yourself, self, I can break that down because 6 and 3 work together. So here is what we do. We choose... The GCF of all the terms. Now, since this is an easy one, three only has two factors, right? One and three. Six is one, two, three, six. What's the biggest number that's in both? Three. So step one, we choose the GCF of all terms. Okay. 
including variables. And we'll do that in a minute. Step two, if we're going to factor, we must have to divide, yes? So over here, we divided by three, right? So here, we're going to divide all terms by the G. Oh, I've lost it. Can't remember what I wrote. Oh, there we go. By the GCF. So what is the GCF of six and three? Three. three. So step one, we chose it. It was three. Step two. Freeze the computer. Step three, or step two, divide by three. And step three is we write the answer in the following form. You put the GCF, then you put a bracket, and then you put the quotient. What's a quotient? If a product is the answer in division, qu in multiplication, quotient is division. You put the quotient one plus or minus the quotient two and so on until you're all done. So how many quotients do I have here? I divided there, there's quotient one, yes? I divided there, there's quotient two. So what is my final answer here? What's the GCF? Three. What's the first quotient? Two X plus what's the second quotient? One. And you will notice that the computer is mind boggled by that. You will notice that we can split it into actual pieces and get an answer, or we can do algebra and get an answer. Is everybody cool? Yeah? Nothing new, right? It's division, and it's similar to what we do with fractions, right? So let's look at the next one. We're not going to do any pictures. We're just going to do this with algebra, OK? Page 126, I think. OK, so we're not going to do this. We're just going to go straight into algebra. So you look at this and you see what? You see a four and a six, yes? Do they work together? With what number? Two. If I gave you four over six, you would know to divide that by two, divide that by two, and you would get two thirds, yes? So as soon as you see stuff that you're starting to notice, you got to leave that alone. But there's more here, isn't there? What's that? An X. What's that? An X. Does that mean there's an X that is also shared? Yes. So step one is decide on the GCF. Remember, the GCF is the numbers and variables. Now, we already know how to do this from simplifying roots, right? And our exponent laws. So we know that the GCF of four and six is two, right? We know that from, you know, learning fractions in grade three. Now, how many X's does this guy have? So we have X and X, yes? As soon as it wakes up. And how many X's does the six X have? One. So what's the greatest amount of X's shared between the two of them? One. So my GCF must equal 2X, right? Everybody with me? So now, step two is we divide by the GCF. What do we divide by the GCF? Every term. So what are we going to get? We're going to get 4x squared plus 6x divided by what? 2x and 2x. 
Then step three, we write the answer as GCF comp bracket quotient one plus or minus plus or minus quotient two and so on. So what was my GCF? 2x. 2x. What was the first quotient? What's 4 divided by 2? Two? 2. What's x squared divided by x? x? x. Just like exponent laws. Plus. What's 6 divided by 2? 3. What's x divided by x? 1. Do we write it? No. 2x plus 3. Does everybody see how to do it? Yeah. Now, you've seen how to do a couple of easy ones. We're not going to do this one yet. We're going to come back to this one later. But before we go on, I want to make sure you can actually do this. We've written it out twice. You should be able to do this, right? I'm going to write one out here that you can do in your head. I want you to try to do it in your head. Everybody ready? Okay. Five x cubed plus ten x plus ten x squared plus fifteen x. So just run through the steps in your head. Does that look like something that shares some factors? What factor does it share? Five. Excellent. Does it share any of the variables? Yes. How many? One. Five X. So we've got our GCF, right? So what is it? Five X. So I'm going to write what you tell me. So I've got my GCF. What do I do with that GCF? Divide what? All of it. Where do I write that GCF now? Out front. What do I write inside the brackets? All the quotients. What's 5 divided by 5? 1. Do we write 1? What's x cubed divided by x? x squared. What's 10 divided by 5? 2. What's x squared divided by x? x. What's 15 divided by 5? 3. What's x divided by x? 1. Do I write 1? No. Does everyone see how to do it? Would it matter if there were extra letters there? If I changed all these letters to Y, 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 instead of X, could we do it? Yes. Excellent. What if I left them both there? Is it still the same thing? Yes. So if I gave you this, 4X squared Y cubed, minus 8xy squared. What would you do with that? Same, Same thing. So choose your number. What's the number that works with 4 and 8? Four. 4. So I know that I'm going to be dividing by 4. Is there anything else that's common? How many x's? 1x, because that only has 1x to give. How many y's? 2. Two. So now I've got my GCF, yes? Yeah. So what goes on the outside? 4xy squared. What goes on the inside? 2, 1 is going to be x. 3, 2 is going to be y, correct? Minus 8 and 4? 2. 2, x and x? Gone. Y and y? Gone. Done. Can everybody do greatest common factor? Yes. All right. Skip that one. Go on to the next page. So now that we know the basics of it, there's a couple of things I want to remind you of. Step first thing I want to remind you of is this. What are the steps? Decide on GCF. All terms. That means letters and numbers. Two. Divide by GCF. 
all terms. Step three, write. GCF bracket quotient one, plus or minus quotient two, and so on. Right? What's the GCF? So what do I do? So I divide everything by five. Then I rewrite it. Five what? X plus one. Good. What about this one? Three. So I rewrite it as three. No, no, no. Bracket. Two X plus one. Excellent. It will close, I hope. It's half open. The dog's getting out. Hey, now, looks different, is it? No, no. no. what do you do? What is the GCF? Three. Three. And I rewrite it. Three. What's the first quotient? X squared plus 4X. Minus two. Excellent. And last one. GCF. Tricky. Two. Two X. Rewrite it. Two X. First quotient. Two X plus three. Everybody cool? Yes. Now, over on the right here, in big letters, some way that will help you remember it. Always try to GCF. If you can, do it. Every time from now until the end of grade 11 when you never have to take any more math again in your lives. If you see a polynomial that you are able to GCF, do it. Okay? Always. It might be the only thing you do, or it might be the first of 10 steps. But always try it. Everybody cool? All right. Right now, I want you to finish 127 and 128. We should be able to get that done in class, which will then allow me possibly to go back to that little bit of stuff that we skipped. But if we don't, I don't care. I'm happy if we get to here. All right? Go. I'm going to pause the recording because I'm 5x. And what's in the middle? 5y. 3x. 6xy squared. Nicely done. What about that one? 2. So what goes on the outside? 2. Um, I know that it's complicated what we're doing right now. Going over the work that we just did. You're just memorizing it, and then you're going to check your work in your book when you get home? Oh, I know. You're taking the last 10 minutes of class off. So if we do that 100 times, that's 1,000 minutes of class you've taken off, which if we divide by 60 is about 15 hours, which means you've taken off about 15 class, which is about 15% of the year. So whatever you get in this course, I should just take off 15%, right? I know.
I'm a math Good teacher. Morning. Please excuse this interruption for this Now, all of you are going to pay attention to this while that's going on. Because I'm not going to try to talk over it anymore. I'm just going to write the right answers. Make sure yours are right. Fine Arts Night is November 29th. Please enter the t-shirt design contest. See Mr. Lockup for details. Today is the last day to order grad clothing. See Tiffany in the office or Mrs. Craig in R201. The junior football team's victory over GW Graham on Wednesday was 55-0, meaning we, we finished first place in our division in the regular season and are off to playoffs in two weeks, so congratulations there. Um, Put a star by that one. We're going to talk about it Monday. The football team is playing its first regular season game on the Panther Field today against GW Graham. The game is for the Eastern Conference title. It is also senior days. It's the last game for our grade 12 players. Please come on out and cheer on the Panthers to victory. Uh, there will be a boys rugby meeting for anyone interested in playing this year. Please come out on Monday, November 6th at lunch uh, to Mr. Kleisinger's room in A106. The senior boys soccer team lost a close game yesterday in the penalties against Fleetwood Park. The game was tied 1-1 after regulation and overtime uh, and in penalty shots, the Panthers sadly lost 4-3. The team plays, played amazingly well in really bad conditions. The next game is Monday, November 6th at 3 on the Panther Field against Princess Margaret in a must-win game. Go on out and uh, support those guys. Junior girls basketball tryouts will be next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 4.30 to 6 in the jungle if you're interested in playing basketball. Students in all grades and your parents are invited to an info session on applying for scholarships in the library conference room at 6.30 p.m. The seminar will be run by Brittany Palmer, who won 35 scholarships totaling over $125,000. She will walk those who attend through a step-by-step -step process on how to find and apply for scholarships. The language challenge applications, applications are here. See Mrs. McKenzie for more information. They are due today. And uh, regular pack is on today, so uh, those of you who uh, need to attend, you know who you are, but here's a little reminder. And hopefully I don't uh, butcher your names. Aiden Cassia, Alyssa uh, Boucher, Caitlin Davies, Panit Dial, Mark Destira, Chani Dollywall, Maya Farah, Aaron Fernandez, <coughs> Lebaniel Garcia, Ranbir Gill, Sukhmanjit Khan, Jordan Jones, Gavin Katar, Eric Lady, Jaden Murphy. Jaden Murphy, you're on here twice, you're a popular guy. Anthony Fan, Skylar Ronquist, uh, Sam Salazar, Olivia Schultz. Gervier Sidhu, Samuel Yuko, Nick Weens, Mitchell Willems, and Brendan Williams. Phew! Oh. Uh, a reminder as well. Fire squared pi R S. Yeah, there's, I thought there should be an S there. Oh, okay. Our garbage all over the, the, the uh, floors and in uh, different areas of the school. We're, we're noticing that the garbage is starting to pile up. So all those uh, Halloween candy wrappers and juice boxes and all those kinds of things. Please make sure that. Uh, you look out for our beautiful building and, and clean up after yourself. Uh, and with that, uh, please wait for the bell and your teacher's permission before you uh, are dismissed for lunch. 35 pi. And that's it. Make sure you check it. Make sure you can do it. Yo. Make sure you have a star by C so we can talk about it Monday.